There is nothing compassionate about running out of money. With the pandemic behind us, we must once again be responsible and build up our resilience to future shocks. That means bringing down borrowing so we can start to reduce our debt. And today's figures confirm that is happening. Ahead of my first autumn statement in 22, the OBR forecast headline debt would rise to above 100% of GDP. Today, they will say it will fall in every year to just 94% by 2028, 29. Underlying debt, which excludes Bank of England debt, will be 91.7% in 2024 5, according to the OBR, then 92.8%, 93.2%, 93.2% before falling to 92.9% in 2028 29, with final year headroom against debt falling of £8.9 billion. Our underlying debt is therefore on track to fall as a share of GDP, meeting our fiscal rule. And we continue to have the second lowest level of government debt in the G7, lower than Japan, France or the United States. We also meet our second fiscal rule for public sector borrowing to be below 3% of GDP three years early. Borrowing falls from 4.2% of GDP in 23-4 to 3.1%, 2.7%, 2.3%, 1.6% and 1.2% in 2028-29. By the end of the forecast, borrowing is at its lowest level of GDP since 2001. None of that, of course, would be possible if Labour implemented their pledge to decarbonise the grid five years early by 2030. By their own calculations, that costs £28 billion a year to do. But last month, after flip-flopping for months, they said they said they're not going to spend the £28 billion after all, but somehow they'll meet their pledge. Somehow, Madam Deputy Speaker, can only mean one thing. Tax rises on working families. Same old Labour. Today, in contrast, a Conservative government brings down taxes with borrowing broadly unchanged. In fact, borrowing is slightly lower than the autumn statement. And the fact that we are bringing borrowing down is something of particular importance to one very special person. Sir Robert Stamen is the outgoing Chief Executive of the Government's Debt Management Office, and after 20 years of exceptional public service, he is in the gallery. Thank you, Sir Robert. I now turn to growth. Just after I became Chancellor, The OBR expected GDP to fall by 1.4% in the following year. In fact, it grew, albeit slowly. Now the OBR expects the economy to grow by 0.8% this year and 1.9% next year, 0.5% higher than their autumn forecast. After that, growth rises to 2.2%, 1.8% and 1.7% in 2028. Since 2010, They don't want to hear this, but these are the facts. Since 2010, we have grown faster than Germany, France or Italy, the three largest European economies. And according to the IMF, we will continue to grow faster than all three of them in the five years ahead. Surveys by Lloyds and Deloitte show business confidence is returning. In other words, because we have turned the corner on inflation, we will soon turn the corner on growth. And today's OBR forecasts also show that we have made good progress on the Prime Minister's three economic priorities. Compared to when the three pledges were made, inflation has halved, debt is falling in line with our fiscal rules, and growth is fully one and a half percentage points higher than predicted. And as growth returns, they don't have a growth plan, so they might as well listen to ours. As growth returns, our plan is for economic growth not sustained through migration, but one that raises wages and living standards for families, not just higher GDP, but higher GDP per head, and that means sticking to our plan with a budget for long-term growth, more investment, more jobs, better public services and lower taxes. 